And now it's time for Victoria's Gluten-Free Gastro Gab, the information source for your gluten-free lifestyle. Today, Victoria talks with Brandon Camp from Growers Organics about the challenges of raising two young kids gluten-free. And now here's your host, Victoria Wolf. Hello, I am so happy you're here. We are going to have an amazing show and enjoy a Eero pizza. And our guest today is Brandon Camp. How are you, Brandon? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm excellent. So happy you made it here with all the snow that we had. I in the came last hungry. Couple of days. Well, good because for the first time we have an appetizer. All right. Today. So um, you, I asked you what your favorite food was before you came on, and you yes. said. The gyro. And so I am tasked at making an gyro pizza, which I have prepared and ready to go. And on the gyro pizza is a dairy-free tzatziki sauce. Yum. And a dairy-free tzatziki sauce really pairs well with dolmas. And it just so happens that Rich and I had dolmas for lunch yesterday, and we had <laughs> leftovers. So our appetizer is dolmas, dolmas and tzatziki sauce. And so you have or have not had one before? They look familiar. I can't, I can't say with certainty that I have, but I, you know, they're they're jogging some memories. Okay, well, th my son looks at him. He sees me buy him um, at uh, King Supers in, in the Olive Bar because I have to have them. Okay. And I think he thinks I'm just the weirdest thing on the planet. You didn't make these. I did not make these. I want to learn how to make I'll them. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> I came for your food. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, my tzatziki, my dairy-free tzatziki sauce. So you, let's try one. Let's get this started because I'm hungry. Cheers. And no double dipping. No, I'm doing one bite. Mm. Oh, that's pretty good. It's the sauce. So a dolma is a basically a grape leaf stuffed with rice. And it's got a lot of lemon in it. And I'm sure there's other spices. And I probably should find that out because I am going to make these someday. Yeah. So why is the Eero pizza your favorite? Or the Eero, not the pizza? Well, I, it's, it's one of those items. I don't know. I feel like it's hard to find a good one when you do. You kind of latch onto it. Uh, typically, they're wrapped in a nice pita bread, which we can't eat. Yeah, so there's it, it's it's kind of like you you lust for what you can't have, right? This is true. And when you talked about putting something on a pizza, I I don't know that there's been one made. I'm sure there has, but I'm sure somebody somewhere has. Yeah, and someone will probably make one after this. Yes, but we will not be the first. Well, especially because <laughs> I'm putting the the recipe on the website with your name on it. So oh this yeah, going to be Brandon Camp's. I'll I'll give it a shot pizza. myself too. Yeah, it's um, it's this is one of the least um, <laughs> complicated recipes that we've done. I just Perfect. got, <laughs> I just got done posting a a, a a podcast from last week, and this recipe is like this long, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. But Click it, the link it, for the recipe. It turned out really well, and so I'm going to give um, a little plug to Holla Daily. They are our beer partner. So today we are, I think we're we're sipping the favorite blonde which I think is going to pair really well with the pizza we're going to have later. But we also have some Fat Randy, so, um, yes. and Randy is not fat, by the way. Oh, Fat Randy. Yeah. I think it's one of the better beer names out there. Because I, I just instantly it. try to think, like, what does Randy look like? Randy's a tall, skinny guy, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Karen's. Yeah. So yeah. it's opposite. So, and Karen really isn't blonde. She's brunette. I was telling him, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I spotted Karen in Fort Collins with a couple beer reps. Oh, really? Probably a distributor reps, yeah, up at a... Uh, it's this little delicatessen next to, uh, attached to the hotel, and he was Armstrong, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it was her, and I didn't want to be like, hey. She is, she is blonde. I don't know you, but, <laughs> but I, I, I know so Victoria and Richard. Yeah. <laughs> that might be a little creepy. So. Well, and she was with the beer rep guys, too. So. Well, yeah. yeah. You don't want to interrupt that. But I love the beer. So, Brandon, the, the, the reason you're on, I, I, not, not the only reason, because I like you and you're going to be fun to talk to, but Thank you. mainly <laughs> we want to talk about, you know, ra you're raising children with, with uh, gluten intolerance and going Correct. through that. You have very young children. So I want to get that conversation started. So give us a little background on <clears throat> how that occurred and what, you know, what, what prompted the, the, the gluten-free diet. Well, we, ironically enough, when we had our son, I had gone to paleo which is, you know, gluten-free plus gluten some other, free plus. You know, like there's some other, you know, restrictions and such. Well, it's more like gluten-free minus, isn't it? Because there's no carbs? Well, yeah, yeah. You Well, yeah. And then like, you know, beans and rice and things like that are not supposed to be included. Oh, really? In I, didn't, I thought beans and rice were totally paleo. No, not rice, but beans because of the protein, no? Uh, I, I don't know. I stayed away from them just the way they affected me, but I'm pretty sure in most paleo recipes I don't see beans. Oh, but I could well, be I wrong. Something new today. Don't quote me on that. But um, but we I had started it. I started uh, joined a gym in Frisco, and that they were really big into the paleo eating. So 
I got on the bandwagon and I spent $400 on all the spices that it required to <laughs> make food taste good without right. junk. And uh, so our son at the time was still, you know, he was breastfeeding and we'd just gotten into feeding him, you know, real food. So he grew up paleo for the first couple years of his life. And then uh, we moved to Colorado, started enjoying beer and pizza and, and all that stuff again. I got off the, the paleo eating for the most part. and. We noticed he was having some some skin issues. Um, we took him to the doctor, and she's like, "It's eczema." You know, she gave us a cool little printout that said it could be. You know, there's four or five like main items that could cause it. You know, stress and I think dairy was on there and gluten, and it was kind of a, you know what? Let's get back to to where we were healthier eating with the gluten because it it affects me not like that, but and we got back on it, and I mean, it was you know within probably 48 hours, you know. And the big, the big kicker behind it was we don't have to use that cream, you know, right. the steroid cream. And if we can find a way to do it with, with with eating or whatever it may be. Oh, that's always better than having to use some sort of medication. Yeah. Um, and then they fell in love with your pizza. Um, yeah. It's another happy to be gluten free. Yeah. They have options. So just your son needs to be gluten free, but is your, is your entire family gluten free? Do you have a gluten free home? Uh, I wouldn't say gluten free. My wife... Um, She's jumped on it. She's a fitness trainer. She's extremely fit. And being gluten-free, that paleo lifestyle kind of got her over a plateau of her fitness and shed some, some problem areas after a couple kids. So she is, I would say she's 95%. She'll, she'll pick up some cake or something and treat oh, herself. But gotta she, have cake. She busts her butt in the gym. So <laughs> yeah. She, uh, but yeah, for the most part, I mean, I think when we go out, we try to order gluten-free um, you know, pretty much everywhere you go now, you can get something that's gluten free. It may just be meat and veggies, but but there's nothing again. Wrong with our meat kids eat that at sure. home, yeah. so they're they're used to it. Yeah, I think a lot of people think that, especially when they're first diagnosed with celiac or they start their gluten free diet because of gluten intolerance, that you have to replace everything that you were eating before. You can't possibly not eat something that doesn't resemble bread or pasta. Right. And, and, and to me, that that's a natural progression because you're eliminating such a huge part of your diet. I mean, right. it's not just, we always say gluten, gluten, gluten. It's, it's not one little protein. It is right. a little protein, but it's, you know, pasta and cake and cookies and pizza and bread and, <laughs> you know, hoagies. And I mean, there's so many things that you can't eat anymore the way you used to you know, used to eat them before. And so to go out to a restaurant and order something gluten-free that doesn't involve bread almost sounds weird. Yeah. But, you know, I do it, I do it a lot. I don't always, well, I, I don't really. I usually go out to eat <laughs> places that have our products because I'm probably craving a sandwich or pizza. Right. I mean, I could make that at home, but it's always nice to go out. But then, you know, going out just for a steak and some delicious veggies, I'm, I'm, I'm all down with that too. Definitely, so nothing wrong with steak and potatoes. So it's interesting. The whole eczema thing is very, very interesting to me because my son has has had eczema since basically he came out. They said eczema, and they you know it's been that wow. way ever since. And and he's had it horribly, like head to toe when he was a baby. It was it was it wasn't pleasant. And all, the only answer I ever got for years and years and years was the steroid cream. And then luckily a couple years ago, um, they uh, a, a new cream came out that's steroid free called Eucrisa, okay. and he uses that quite a bit. But in the last, uh, I'd say last year, he's had so many um, resurgences of his eczema. They have flared so bad. He had head to toe. I mean, it, there was one point we took him to the dermatologist. I think it's been two months now. It's right when school started. He, <laughs> he's gonna hate me for sharing this. <laughs> Okay, he's almost 60. So we're in the, we're in the dermatologist's oh, office. And she's like, well, I need you to strip down to your, you know, to basically your underwear. And he's just looking at her and going, my mom's here, my mom's here. <laughs> and, and it's kind of like, I didn't want to be there, but I did because he, he wouldn't show me. Yeah. And so to see how covered his body was, it was, it was just... It was horrible. And um, so, you know, basically they're like, okay, we have this cream and we have this and we have that. It was all topical stuff to put on. And then I, at the end, and we were lucky that day, we saw um, <clears throat> one of the doctors that was covering, she was retiring, but she's been do a dermatologist for like 40 years or something. And so I'm like, okay, I've got an expert here. I'm, right. I was like, well, what, what do you think about the food component? And she's like, well, I don't really think that food is a trigger. It's what what's in the food. <laughs> It'd be a trigger. And I'm like, okay, I've heard this the entire time he says eczema. No, it's not dairy. No, it's not gluten. It's not any things. But your son's doctor basically had no problem saying. We had a printout. Yeah, yeah, there was in the 
And so it was never a question. It could because what did you say? Stress, gluten, or dairy? There, yeah. I mean, when he was under one, I don't think he was having much stress. There, there. Well, yeah. <laughs> I and, guess he could, but. Well, you know, with him, he's he's a big boy. Um, I love you, Evan. Don't. <laughs> he's a, he's he's a big guy. He's a big baby. Always, you know, sturdier. He eats well. He gets hot. I'm hot blooded too. So you know, there's there's been times where we've seen very minimal stuff after you know a day outside when it's 90 degrees right well, that, that's jeans. understandable yeah. yeah but but i mean you know whenever he i mean it would it started behind his legs and it would kind of come up into his groin region and you know he's just sitting there itching you know scratching yeah, you, you and crying stop. and yeah. fussing and no matter what you put on that they still especially you know, at night i know dawson um oh i mentioned his name on air okay <laughs> Sorry, Dawson. Tag him. Tag him in the yeah, video. <laughs> tag him. It's like, I can't. He's on no social media. Us adults are on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Yeah, he scratches at night, not even knowing yeah. he was scratching at night. It, you know, he's asleep and he's scratching. And scratching is the worst thing for eczema. It just makes it worse and worse. And <clears throat> But I just found it interesting that no doctor would come out and say, so maybe I need to take him to your doctor. But he doesn't well, want that. He's I don't know that how age. he'd feel about it, the pediatrician. I mean, they do have a fish tank. Um, <laughs> if he, you know, it's a, do they have candy? Do uh, they give out candy? No, no candy. <laughs> um, we, we love that office, though. It's in Louisville. Um, but it, it's, it's just, you know, our big thing is, you know, I've said this to you before. Like right now, our, our son's four and a half. Our daughter will be three in December. We have ultimate control. Yes. <laughs> over their lives. Yeah, until so, they go to school. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, I'm sure they'll want a cell phone in two years, but yeah. when they see their friends having one, but right now we can kind of, you know, this is it. This is what you're going to eat. Right. And, and Lay the groundwork now, and then. I, t I took them to McDonald's one time because it was so nasty outside, and we we're driving just to play in the play gym, and they were like, "What? Why? why what is these people are eating? What are they eating? <laughs> like, oh never goodness. been to McDonald's." Oh my! And um, you know, nice. I love I love my parents, Karen. If you're listening, you fed us way too much McDonald's when we were kids. Yeah, I mean McDonald's isn't nothing is bad <laughs> in moderation, but obviously if you can't eat it, I, yeah. I remember D Dawson was like three, four years old before he had a donut, and I was so proud of that. No donuts. Well, yeah, you know, it's it's so easy with kids to like drive through and grab something, Happy Meal or. Yeah, you know, and, it's, and it's, it's, it gets worse as they get older and they're busier and you've got practice and you've got this, that, and the other thing. And um, it can, becomes, especially when you're gluten-free, I think that's one of the hardest things is convenience foods when, yeah. when you're gluten-free. I mean, you can't just run. You can't even go to, if you go to 7-Eleven, now granted I'm dairy-free too, so it makes it more difficult. Yeah. You go to 7-Eleven and try to find something that, that you can eat. Like for me, I got to look for something dairy-free and gluten-free. I have two choices. One Water. is beef jerky, oh. <laughs> and they stop, they stop carrying my favorite jerky, which is Duke's, and two chips. And then I have really two chips, to, two different chips. I have Fritos and Lay's, and everything else either has too many ingredients that I don't want to go near, or it has milk ingredients in them. Oof. And so, I mean, so when I'm out and about, and I forget to bring food with me, which happens a lot, <laughs> um, I'm basically having pretty much a soda because that's filling me up and making me feel less hungry, which is not good for me, and Dukes and Fritos. So People I mean, will walk by and look at your car and be like, look at this <laughs> What's one. wrong with this woman? Yeah. Soda, Dukes, and Frito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm embarrassed. See, I, I admit it. See, the first step is admitting. It's like a long-haul trucker. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> but I don't, I don't plan well enough. I've always been bad at that. But it's hard. So when, the, when your kids get older, when your son gets older, it's going to be more difficult for the convenience stuff. I mean, sure, you can go through a drive through and get maybe a salad, mm -hmm. but, you know, that's a hard sell to, like, a six-year-old when they're really, really hungry. Well, and I'm not going to buy a salad I no, those are gross. Yeah, <laughs> I always, I, I will it's... never buy a salad at a at a drive through. I've been sick multiple times. Salads at drive throughs when I was way younger. Well, and you know, with the kids, hopefully by the time he's that age, it's not going to be as judged. No, like I saw people like you. You know, you go out and do you have anything gluten free? You see that sometimes people are like, oh, you want to? Oh, one of them. So, yeah. yeah, I've heard some. Oh, yeah, you're one of <laughs> like you, you, I'm like. Do you really need to be gluten free? Or are you just following a fad? Yeah, we. Well, it sounded like that fellow from the pizza. Remember him? Oh yes. Oh yeah. But that was one. That was one amongst thousands. I was actually surprised that <laughs> yeah. there wasn't. Um, yeah, we'll let you in on the secret. Brandon helped us out for a few hours at Pizza Palooza this past summer, and um, we had one guy who came up, and he he might have been a bit inebriated. I, I engaged know. with him too. Unfortunately. You did, and I'm like, Brandon, don't <laughs> just let the him go. Don't yeah. do it. I can't. I wish I remember what he said, but it's just oh, foolish. he was ranting about how nobody 
Nobody oh. needs to not eat gluten, I think. Is yeah, and I said something about my son, and he's like, well, do you want my son to suffer? Oh, he'll be fine. You know? <laughs> I was like, would you like to hear about my gastrointestinal issues when I eat gluten? We could have a nice, long, yeah. detailed <laughs> conversation. Give me a piece of bread. Let's go share a yeah, car for a little go, while. Yeah. <laughs> It's not going to be good. <laughs> but I was surprised that there was only one. But um, but yeah, it's it, you have control of your kid's life right now, but you're going to have to have even more control as they get older because you're it's going to be on you no. to pack the food that they need to take with them wherever they go. And so it's it's not just them going through this. It's, it's yeah, you and your it's, wife going through this as well. And that's tough to pack stuff. Uh, that I don't, obviously, it must be because I don't do it very well. Yeah, we do. Like right now for the preschool, we do... Uh, there's like this gluten-free flaxseed muffin that they really mm-hmm. enjoy. Um, some apples, just a local organic applesauce pack, and then um, they do eat the baby bell cheese. Man, yeah, see, I, they can do dairy, a lot more options. Well, I, yeah, that's great. And I've I had never had one of those. The baby bell? And I, I, I didn't. I, I've had one before. I had. I don't, and I try to stick off the cheese, so I just they're those are for the kids. I see them, and they're. Brandon. They're a little thick. They're, yes. they're so small, you just pop them in. The density yeah. is nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they mm. they they do that. They, do they, they have a dairy free? No, no, they make them that way so they just keep eating it. So they sell in those big bags. Yeah, it's like, like a satchel. But you know, if they wanted people to eat more, they shouldn't wrap them the way they do. It's hard. It's a little it's hard kinda, to get in. I kind of like the. You got to work. It's it's yeah. like the. You know, with some people, oh, I don't even enjoy that. It's just the process, right? Oh, the process of ripping yeah. it open. And yeah, or like, oh, oh. I don't really like coffee. I like to grind the. It's the just like a little Pac-Man morning. once you open yeah, it. It's then then get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That happens. <laughs> Pac-Man and the cheese. So what? Um, so your your son has been gluten free for so long. He doesn't really know. Any dare he doesn't well he knows McDonald's exists now yeah so and so how do you explain how do you explain that to him he's you said he's three he'll he'll be he's four and a half oh four he's the yeah, older one that's yeah. right so they're old he's old enough at this point to to understand a lot of things obviously mm-hmm. so how do you explain you can't have this because I know <clears> when <throat> kids are that small they they really don't understand completely why they can't do something or have something he's been really good about not questioning us um oh dad says do it I'm well doing no it. i mean we you know again we're we're i think now the big thing about our food is um my mother-in-law kelly she she's always in town and she sees the kids they love to try to help us cook we've got chef's knives you know nothing like elon but chef's <laughs> knives and they're sharp and uh you know so she got them this little plastic knife it's serrated but it actually cuts Oh, so they help with dinner. So that I think that's that, wonderful. That they they don't care what it is. Like two nights ago, they actually cut up uh, some local potatoes we had um, from Jones Organic Farms. Jones family, good stuff. Um, <laughs> they're charging you for that. Yeah, they're they're so good. Um, it's like a seven color. So uh, we grow potatoes in Colorado. Oh, Colorado's potatoes are. We've got a purple tie dye right now. It's beautiful. Where do you get it. those? They're uh, San Luis Valley. Oh, okay. But we have. So they're grown out. They're grown out west, closer mm-hmm. to Idaho. They're in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you only think about Idaho for potatoes. And and you know, I I don't know. I'm partial to Colorado potatoes, but I I don't I'm do sure I've had I don't do the russets or it. the reds. I like the you know the medley is like a seven color oh, purple yeah. tie dye. Um, well, but they they cut those they cut them up and they put them in bowl with a bell pepper and, and he was like this is what we want for dinner. Oh. And cool. I'm like okay well it's some so we put it in the skillet and cooked it and they ate every bit of it. Wow. So I think right, you know, at home, just the inclusion of them in the cooking process um, is super important. Outside, you know, it, it's coming because we just, we'll ask them, hey, here's three items. You want A, B, or C? And right. we'll leave off the corn dog yeah. and the hamburger, you know, things like that. So, um, you know you get gluten-free corn dogs. Applegate Farms makes a pretty good one. Oh, my gosh. Don't tell me For that. a treat. For a treat. I love corn dogs. Mm. I mean... I used to buy them, and I'd have one every like couple weeks or something. Yeah. And um, there's Applegate, obviously, is much much higher quality of, of dog, yeah. and and of corn. Yeah, I think, we, <laughs> I think they eat Applegate chicken, like some kind of yeah. kids. But it was it was good. To, I remember when I found them the first time. It was just one of those things. It's like you get in your mind. I can never have a corn dog again. It's right. Like, oh, but wait, I can. Now there's another company that makes gluten free corn dogs, but they're. They're more of a larger national company that is that you would not consider natural yeah. at all, and so I wouldn't go near those. Well, but Applegates, I'm. I it's interesting because good. it's a corn dog, right? So corn, not non glutinous, if that's a term. Um, that I think that is a term, and if but, it's not, it is now. Yeah, it's real. Um, <laughs> but 
You know, when you think about, there's a new Mexican restaurant that opened in Old Town Lafayette. You oh. should go to. It's phenomenal. But their menu is naturally gluten free, just based on the food style, corn mm-hmm. tortillas. Mm-hmm. And and there, I read a write a write up on them, and it's funny because they said, and for those of you who like gluten, there's a few beers on the menu as well. <laughs> but their entire menu is well, just wonderful. naturally gluten free. Um, so there's there's salvation. There's hope. Oh, it was definitely hoping. <clears throat> I'm so bummed that I can't do dairy because that pretty much rules out every Mexican restaurant because there's almost always cheese and everything. I went to one, I forget where it was, in Commerce City, not too long ago. Sorry, I'm eating my, my dolmas here. Yeah, and um, I got something that didn't have any cheese, didn't have any gluten, and it was okay. But it wasn't, it wasn't the food everybody else was getting to eat. So Mexican is great for gluten, but not, but not mm-hmm. obviously for dairy. But, you know, not all of us have dairy issues that have the gluten issues. I'm glad your son doesn't, because that would make for an even more well, complicated life for him. We've toyed with seeing, cause, you know, on the dairy, but it doesn't seem to be an issue now. So, so I think I think my son's problem is dairy. I don't think it's gluten, and um, he's always had dairy issues that he wants. You know, he's older now; he wants to ignore it. He doesn't. Uh, when he becomes <clears> an adult, maybe he'll decide that he doesn't want to feel as bad. Well, I mentioned my 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 younger brother is some skin issues and we always have told them like it's your diet 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 said, oh diet. no 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 people eat crap all the time and live to a hundred <laughs> that's fine but you, you want lesions and you know like discomfort Ooh. You know? no no that's a, so why do you think he doesn't i mean usually when well i say this about my son too it, it is kind of interesting that uh, someone can actually be experiencing physical symptoms that are causing them pain or causing them discomfort or causing them just to be a pain in the butt, yet they will not make that change. I think it's a generational thing with him. Sorry, Blake. Uh, <laughs> you know, the it's, bus just came by and you were under it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, back it up one more time. Uh, it's, you know, that, that generation, is, everything is, is, is right here, right now. You know, fast food, fast phones, fast internet. It, it's, everything is right, right now fast responses like yeah i texted him 30 seconds ago i haven't heard anything oh my fortunately God. he takes a little while to get back on text but it's you know and he he manages a, a pizza joint um in texas really good pizza like if there was someone's like hey you're gonna have a gluten glutinous pizza i'm going to that pizza place like garlic that butter good? oh my Whoa, gosh garlic butter on the bread on the Whoa. yeah but um he manages that so it's like you know, for the for the longest, he just ate pizza. Like, oh. And then, but it's fast food, you know, Whataburger and all that other stuff. So. Oh, well, pizza can be a healthy choice, considering, depending on what you put on top of your pizza. It's a balanced I think group. it is. You've got, you've got your carbs, you've got your protein, you've got yeah. your veggies, if you so choose to put veggies on the pizza. Well, a pepperoni pizza would not be whole pizza by that. yourself. Well, that, that might night. be going beyond. Yeah. Yeah, There's, moderation. Yeah. yeah, moderation is nowhere near an entire pizza. But it pizza. is good pizza. Well, speaking of pizza, it's time to make a pizza. So All right. I'm going to head over here. Do you need my help? Are you good? Nope, you're good. You just sit there, enjoy your dolmas Beautiful. and uh, Hala Daily beer. Yes, please. Okay, so Thank we are you. making a Eatero pizza, which is, I have, there's a bit of a theme going on. Um, there's a couple pizzas I have made in, lately that I've actually eaten the food, but this is one where I have never in my life had an Eatero, ever. And I hope I'm saying that right. I'm trying to say it right. It's one of those where I think people say hero, hero, gyro, gyro. Gyro. Yeah, gyro. I'll take a gyro. (laughs) It's one of those, like, find the most authentic place that serves that and ask them. Yes, exactly. I'll have the good gyro. I'll have that thing that starts with a G. Um, Because I was a vegetarian for 16 years before I went gluten-free. And so those are are my formative food years. Right. And they were very formative, actually. (laughs) Um, That's when I would have had one if I wasn't a vegetarian. And um, so now I can't have one because of the gluten. So this is what I imagine one tastes like. So what I started with is a dairy-free tzatziki sauce. And I used um, mayonnaise and vegan sour cream or dairy-free sour cream as my base. It's usually made with Greek yogurt. So this is going to be our pizza sauce. Not all pizzas need to have red sauce. Matter of fact, I am not a big red sauce fan, so most of the pizzas that I make do not have red sauce. So this has cucumber and lemon and some garlic in it. And then I've taken some ground lamb and I've cooked it up with some onion and then za'atar seasoning. So za'atar is not technically a Greek seasoning, but I didn't have any Greek seasoning and I had za'atar. But interesting about za'atar is za'atar is a Middle Eastern seasoning, and it actually means um, 
oregano in Arabic. Okay. And the only difference between za'atar and a traditional Greek seasoning is it also has sesame and sumac in it. Nice. But for the most part, you're going to taste this and go, oh, that's Greek. Yeah, I get this Greek feel. And what's interesting is um, I grew up right next door to Tarpon Springs, Florida. Have you ever heard of Tarpon Springs? I have Florida? not. Am I missing it, out? Yeah, it, it has a humongous Greek population. Ah, okay. So <clears throat> in all my years living in Florida near the Greek population, I never had an Eero. I never. I had one thing that I can remember that was Greek, and it was called pastizio or something. That's it. I had Greek salad. So you really missed out. Yeah, and years. I mean, I love, now that I'm older, I never had Dalmos. Yeah. I don't know what kind of Greek they're, they're doing in Tarpon Springs, but none of this food that I've experienced in my adult years have I seen Interesting. anywhere. Yeah, it was really strange. Okay, so I added some um, red onion to this, and we're going to put this in the oven. We're going to cook it up, brown up the crust, and then when it's done, we're going to top it with some, um, some feta cheese, which... Um, I'll explain this later, but feta is not in the cow family, it's in the sheep family. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll explain how you can tell the difference. And um, some tomatoes. So we are going to take a break while this cooks and we will be back with some delicious Iro pizza. <laughs> Victoria's Gluten-Free Gastro Gab will return after a word from our sponsors and partners. Victoria's Gluten-Free Gastro Gab is brought to you by Victoria's Gluten-Free Kitchen, makers of award-winning pizza crust, breads, buns, ready-to-bake pizzas, and garlic breads, sold in retailers and served in fine restaurants all along the Front Range. Visit our website at victoriasglutenfreekitchen.com to find a retailer or restaurant partner near you or to order our products online. Victoria's Gluten-Free Kitchen, free of gluten, intolerant of average. Nothing goes better with pizza than beer, and Victoria's Gluten-Free Gastrogab proudly serves beers provided by Colorado's only dedicated gluten-free brewer, Holidayly Brewing. Visit their tap house in Golden, or find a retailer or restaurant near you by visiting their website, holidaylybrewing.com. The right knife does make a difference. All demonstrations and product preparation for Victoria's Gluten-Free Gastrogab is done with knives provided by Element Knife Company. Find the right knife for you by visiting elementknife.com. Victoria's Gluten-Free Kitchen products are made with only the finest of ingredients, including locally made Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil, delivered directly to our kitchen by Healthy Harvest. Check them both out at comills.com and healthyharvestnongmo.com. And now let's return for more of Victoria's Gluten-Free Gastrogab. Welcome back. The pizza is ready. We're about to put our final garnish on. But first, I want to show you how I'm going to julienne this cucumber. And I'm using my amazing knife from Element Knives. Thank you very much, Elon Wenzel. OK, first, I'm going to cut this into, I would call it rectangles. And I'm using an English cucumber, so I'm not, oh, sorry. That was a beautiful, beautiful knife work there. So I'm not worried about the, um, the skin at all. And so I'm going to cut these into very fine julienne and then cut through them again because I'm going to top the pizza with these. I want the, the tzatziki sauce already has cucumber in it, so I just want this to be a little taste of cucumber. Another pop of cucumber. Okay, so I've got my cucumber cut. I'm going to go grab my pizza and then we're going to cut the pizza. I am switching knives to the big 10 inch knife, which is great for cutting 10 inch pizzas. Oh, that pizza is not in that drawer. <laughs> I know, laugh all you want, Randy. That, that was pretty funny. One of those fancy drawer ovens over there. Would you like a pizza there? or a hot pad? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I've got the, the onion, the, the lamb, and the sauce, and so now we're gonna add the cucumber. You want to distribute the goal when you in, in a, when you're distributing ingredients on a pizza is you want to think you're going to cut this in eight slices and you want every slice to have a little bit of everything on the pizza. So you want evenly distributed. Same with the tomatoes. Getting those on there. See, it's almost looking like a Christmas pizza here. We've got the it green. Smells and delicious. And the red. Okay, so I'm going to talk about feta here. Since I, you heard me over and over, I can't do dairy, I can't do dairy. I can't do cow dairy very much. Well, not at all. But I can do some sheep dairy and some goat dairy. And true feta cheese, if you get it, um, if it's made in the tradition of Greek, um, the Greek tradition or even the Bulgarian tradition, 
because um, you can get Bulgarian and Greek feta as long as it comes from there or if it is domestic and made in the tradition of that it is always made with sheep and so I can do a little bit of feta so if you truly can't do any dairy dairy um, sheep and goat included this pizza will still taste amazing without the feta cheese and so I'm putting the feta cheese on at, as the garnish because I want it to really pop and not melt into the pizza okay so we're good to go I'm gonna cut wait 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 do you want to get a picture of that beautiful pizza before oh, we cut yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Let's get a picture before we cut it. Thanks, Brandon. It's too pretty. I know. Rich is going to take a picture of this beautiful pizza. Tell me you got, we have dead air right now. Oh, my god. So, goodness. Brandon, what do you think about the weather? Ah, <laughs> sunny uh, with a foot of snow on the ground. It's great. Yes, it was. Um, it keeps the people off the roads. My morning commute was short and sweet this morning. Our commute yesterday on the way home was, was amazing, like it's never occurred. I thoroughly enjoy snow driving. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so now I'm going to cut the pizza. I'm cutting it into eighths. I like to use a knife to cut pizza so that none of my toppings move. And generally with a dairy-free pizza, your toppings are going to really move because you don't have the coagulant of cheese <laughs> to keep everything mm. together. <laughs> that sounds sexy. Ooh. Coagulant. Would you like some coagulant Coagulant's in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, I'm giving you a big piece, Brandon. Thank you, thank you. You can have more than one, too. There you go. Uh, I will take you up on that offer. Rich, would you like a piece of pizza to go with all that beer you drank? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all the beer that Rich drank. He didn't it's, drink that much. We're just, we're just you were, having a good time joking. You get quite that. parts running the uh, behind-the-scenes operations. Yes, if you're paying attention, I have four plates, which means there's... A visitor here who's off camera, which I will not mention his name, but he might be my son. <laughs> May have talked about you earlier, oh, yeah. but um, I won't, won't tell there. your friends you're on. Okay, so after I have cheese everywhere, let's try this amazing gyro pizza. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> tell me I don't say that. Right? Every like, time you say it, it's different. <laughs> yeah, it's like the yo, the accent gets thicker. You get more Greek as the. This is a no, it's, it's, it's the amount of beer that I'm drinking that makes it change. I've only had a little, Thanks, unlike Karen. the Thanks, director. Karen. <laughs> mm. Okay, we're trying our pizza. For those of you who are listening to the audio version, mm. I'll try to make it as, mm. <laughs> as audio as possible so you can tell. My wife has told me I'm a loud eater. How are, you, how are you a loud eater? How, I mean, what is that? Describe? When I'm enjoying something and I'm... Mm, mm, oh, mm, a lot of sounds. Mm, okay. Mm, yes. Mm, oh, that is so good. My son has inherited that trait as well. So the tanginess of the tzatziki mixes with the, <clears throat> the wonderful flavor of the lamb and the zatar and the mm. red onion. I mean, it just all mixes well, so so well together. Delicious. And I think it tastes just like an iro. <laughs> Even though I never had one, I but can, Brandon, you have. So I you can tell say me. it's spot on. You did mm -hmm. a phenomenal job. Thank you. Um, not surprised. Oh God, it's so good. But what do they say? A, a good pizza starts with the crust, right? I think I well, made that do. up. But we well, you know that's interesting. That, <laughs> no, but it's interesting you bring that up. That early on when we got started, back in fourteen fifteen. There mm. was, uh, we went out to the pizza challenge out in Vegas, mm -hmm. you know, and competed, but the, the, the pizza expo was going on around the pizza challenge. And there was somebody we saw speaking about gluten-free. He was from Australia. He's written cookbooks, things like that. Very highly regarded in the gluten-free world, I guess. But his whole attitude was that, you know, it, it, the pizza is just a vehicle for the toppings. The crust is just a vehicle for the toppings. So you don't really have to worry too much how good your gluten-free crust was. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, no, it's not. It, it, you talk to people who love conventional pizza, they're, they're talking about the crust. It's, well, did you like that pizza? Yeah, it was really good, but you know, the crust could have been better. You don't Well, the you don't crust really... is such a differentiator between traditional pizza. Right. It's like, oh, the, the thin crust, the deep dish, you right, know, the big exactly. pie, like it's all. Yeah, it's like, so I... For a very long time, I think people thought that because what the base that they were putting their pizza toppings on was so bad, they kind of had to think that. Right. No, we, we never, ever believed that. So, yes. You're talking about the waxy cardboard kind of Yeah, the stuff that you, it's like, hey, you want a pizza? No. You want to play Frisbee? Yeah, here, I got the pizza yeah. right here. We'll go play Frisbee. Yeah. yeah, that stuff. That's not our stuff. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> I, I, we, well, yeah, we, we, we tried a few before I, before I met you guys and found out about your your crust, but I remember the kind of the, you know, the 
the hump that, that we brought home the naked crust, which the first time our kids ever made a pizza was on one of your gluten free crusts, and it was, uh, yeah, was, I mean, I think you saw pictures, I'm sure, but the yeah, it was a, a monumentous, and ironically enough, it was around this time of year, and we had gotten just dumped with snow, and we needed something to occupy our kids. Oh, so pizza day. Yeah, yeah. so we made we, they made their own pizza, and we had the flatbreads and the round crust, and they were floored. It was it was a it was a win. Well, good. That makes me very happy. And making having family pizza night where you, you have all these ingredients and you just have the crust out there and they get to make their own pizzas. I yeah. think that's a that's a wonderful thing for any family because one introduces kids to creating mm. their own food and it lets them experiment with putting you know ingredients together. What is this going to taste like all together? Right. You can do that with pizza. You can do that with sandwiches, with you know subs here, you know hoagies, whatever. It's a, a really fun thing to do. We have um, a guest we had on last week. Um, gluten-free mom, Liz, um, <clears throat> her son, I forget how old her son is turning, but anyways, he's having a birthday party, and they're having a, and he's, he's celiac, so they're having all the kids that come, we're, we're getting them a little eight-inch crust, and they're going to have a pizza-making part of the party, so mm -hmm. that's going to be fun for them. So speaking of kids and making food, um, what, what tips, tricks, ideas, menu, I mean, what do you, what do you have for people it, trying to make their kids happy being gluten-free, even though they don't have to be eating the bread and the pizza, but I mean, just whole foods is good, but you, you've probably made so many meals now that you, you know, some, you know, good ones that kids will like. I mean, I think for us, the, the, the big factor is just the inclusion in the kitchen. Um, you know, our kids, we've always been a, you know, six, six and a half days out of the week, we cook at home type family so they've they've shown interest in the kitchen and so my mother-in-law got them some knives and now that they can cook and cut their own meals uh, they'll cut what they want and we'll put it in the dish and, and they'll eat it but um, I think just really including them in, in the culinary activities and talking about flavors and I remember one time my son we were talking about plating just joking my wife and I and he's like what is that and we talked to him about it well the next night he plated me a, a plate of <laughs> broccoli trimmings <laughs> Magnificent! It was a pile. He made me. I had to eat it, of course, because he made because he it. Made but, it, yeah. Um, I think I think kids, no matter how young, will thrive in the kitchen. It's you know, it's quality time with your family. Um, you can talk about the ingredients. You can you can get their input too. Right now, our kids are really into stinky veggies, Brussels sprouts and broccoli. Oh, and, that's good. Bitter veggies. Roasted, Bitter is great. Just roasted. You know. Fart veggies, essentially. <laughs> you know, that's how they were feeling. Like, yeah, oh, that's those a good are way to get them to like it. Yeah, but yeah they're, my son is, is really into that. This this age of so his life. So your kids like Brussels? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. That's, that's such a great. Vegetable. I feel like you. We we feel like we won. You know, when your kids are eating Brussels sprouts and broccoli and oh yeah, and, definitely and just clean food. You're like that. The only way you can really do that is just persistence and and time and repetition right <laughs> right and so what do you do when they look at something you're making going i want no part of that i'm not eating uh, you know we had we had an issue with our son and eggs actually um he was a big time egg lover growing up like five or six eggs scrambled at two years old he would just wow finish them um now it's turned our daughters really big into eggs um i prefer you know sunny side up nice medium yolk runny so our son was like i'm not eating eggs and we found out he likes the golden yolk Oh. So I'll take his egg and I'll trim the whites off and he's just like this morning we did potatoes and sausage and I dropped the golden yolk on there. He likes to poke it, let it drain, and then he eats everything. And you put something to do with the whites? No. And I'm wow. fine taking the egg whites well, off. Well yeah, yeah, I mean that's 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 you know, interesting that you that you figured that out. Yeah, because it's, would normally not think, okay, he only likes part of the egg, not the entire egg. And he won't egg. eat a scrambled egg. But he used to love scrambled eggs. Yeah. But he's he's so that was so you know two years ago. Right? Yeah, and when it's like he, my wife said something like, "Oh, I guess you've outgrown that," and so now he's I'm, I've outgrown that. He'll say, "Oh, oh yeah, oh, I'm, I'm, scrambled eggs, they're for children." I'm, I don't like that anymore, <laughs> you know. So, um, but I think you know just having them in the kitchen so often, um, sometimes maybe an annoyance. <laughs> Uh, or danger when you're when you're chopping through. Do you ever and, worry about? I know I would think that many parents might be worried to bring kids into the kitchen when they're too young because of the the knives and all the equipment and it, it, it can be dangerous. What if you can't watch them every second? I, did you what What did you do to deal with with that we, issue? We our daughter was a big concern. We just set her on the island, kind of here, and we're prepping over here, 
because I just see their so little, you could watch the I time. see their little fingers and I'm just thinking like oh that's like a, a really good it's like idea. a little baby carrot I don't want to get that you know yeah. yeah so but but the our mother-in-law came through with a kids cookbook that actually has recipes in it oh and the plastic serrated knives that I can actually cook with cut with them you know but they're not gonna hurt the kids if but they, they won't make a mistake I don't think the kids are strong enough to I, oh, I'm sure you could true. cut someone but they're kid not knives. With their strength yeah, yeah so uh, potatoes, bell peppers, carrots, they can cut with that knife. As long as they don't try to have sword fights with them. Yeah, that's, not allowed. No, but that Stools, would be Stools, we have a stool. That's, you know, that's a, that's another getting them up to that level. Right. Otherwise, they're kind of reaching up on the counter and, and you know, having a stool um, has been good. But I think an island is crucial if you want your kids in the kitchen. Right, because otherwise your back is almost always to them. Yeah. So that's... I can see that not being safe. You've in the got kitchen. pots and pans. You've got the oven on. You know, there's there's a lot that can go wrong. Typically, it's us that'll grab a skillet that we just pull out of the oven without a glove. Oh yeah, <laughs> because yeah, they, you're worried about what the kids are doing, <laughs> and then you and then they see you go, hey, you burned yourself. I'm yeah. not going to do that. My <laughs> wife and I both grabbed it. We've got a skillet that's. Did you put in the oven? I, those I, are my great grandmother's from the late 1800s. Actually oh, dated, yeah, and it's yeah, it's a fun thing to cook with, but. When you take it out of a 450 degree oven yeah. and you put it on, the, it leaves a mark. I've done that. Yeah, we had the little circle from the end, yeah. and, and it peeled like six weeks. It took to it never blistered, which is great because it's your hand. But right. my but wife still. just did it recently, and she, I think she still got some. I, I did it once. I think probably I think it was 2009 or 2010. I am so careful when I put any skillet in the oven. Yeah. It's like this mental reminder: don't touch it without a hot pad. Or well, something. both of us, when it happened, we were both home alone with the kids. Like cooking dinner while the other one was on their way, and it's like you're just oh, daddy this, daddy that, you're ah, boom, and it's like yeah, as soon and then as you when touch you it. look up and you're holding this and you're like oh, oh my okay. god, you held it that long? Yeah, it's oh. it's because you you know you remember when you had a little one around? Oh yeah. yeah, your head is not in the game. No, I, I remember Dawson when he was really little, and I would be cooking in the kitchen. He he liked to get the pots and pans out, and I actually let him do this. Is they would turn them all over, and he would he would just bang them all while I was cooking. Yeah. <laughs> he's over there going mom really did you just do that yeah i did don't worry your friends don't listen to this so i i don't think they do so uh, your kids are about to be one of us is going to be school age going to school you've got peer pressure you've got trading of food at the lunch table are you worried this. i mean i don't know i think it depends on I don't know that if there's anything he wants to trade for that it's something he hasn't had or maybe it's something he doesn't know what it is. But, you know, I think, I think we're going to focus on what he likes. Yeah, give him good. What do you, what do you want to, to take for lunch? What do you want your snack to be? And, but I don't, having kids at this age is such a nerve-wracking. You say things like that and my anxiety just goes oh, up. I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's natural. But, like, you know, the cell phones and all that, like, it, no matter what you do with your kids, they're going to leave your house. Right, and there's going to be something that... You can go to Tommy's house or go to Ben's house or whoever, and, oh, they have an iPad. You know, we were somewhere with the kids and for a, a group kind of party food event, and there was a video game on with, like, some nine-year-olds, and my son found out what a gun was and, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, see, so, they find out things you wanted to maybe, uh, you know, reveal to them at a certain point that they're going to find things out. That, that That's kind of frustrating because you want to be able to prepare them. So we don't want to overshelter, obviously. But, again, we're, we're still at a time where we have some control. Um, so, yeah, we'll just take it one day at a time. It'll all, it'll all be okay. Oh when Dawson was in the last year of elementary school... Uh, I was, we, we, we've had a gluten-free house for a very long time. I would make him, um, it was hard to find things to send to school that was gluten-free. And so I would, and I started out with Udi's pizza crust actually, cause that's all that was out there before we started the business. So I would make him a pizza every Monday. I would make a pizza and I would cut it into eighths. And so every day he'd get two slices of pizza. And by, by in, in, in the morning I would just warm it up. And then by the time he had it for lunch, it was room temperature. Right. And I believe he told me, and he can shake his head yay or nay, that he used to trade his pizza slices for other food. Was that correct? Yeah. He, so, he nodded. I saw it. Yeah. So um, that was kind of interesting. <laughs> Pizza's pizza. I mean. Does it, yeah. Even the Udi stuff he traded and people wanted it. So. <laughs> then he started doing ours. I think I did our pizza crust. We started the business not too long after that. I don't remember how many of those I, I gave him. But. So yeah, we, we eat out 
sometimes maybe once a weekend but it's always I, we try to find places that have options so how would i track down outside of texting you guys <laughs> like where can i find your food at like, it's how, all on the website every it, restaurant okay. yeah we try to keep up as well as we can um, being in distribution now there's a lot of restaurants that'll bring us in before we know about it mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact i do gotta i have to go update that it's um but well, there's it's, it's, it's a fairly daily accurate changing almost right yeah Weekly it can even. yeah and we're always adding restaurants, but the majority of them are on there. And, and we've got some people who that are the gluten free that use it as a guide where, where to eat. Because when you go out, I mean, yeah, you maybe you don't want pizza, or you don't want a hamburger, or you don't want something that uses gluten free bread. But a lot of times you do because you're not I making that, that as much yeah. at home. Yeah. <laughs> I want bread. Lou, have you been the Lou's mm -mm. Italian specialties? Oh, Where's that? My God, Lou's, it is part Lou's. of the Rosenberg's family. Okay. And it's on Downing like and Rosenberg what's Bagel? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What's the street there? It's it's uh I'm not sure. Bruce Bruce Street Randolph and Downing kind okay. of just just south of that. They their sandwiches are phenomenal. They were um they were a little it's not inexpensive, but is worth every single thing. I wonder penny if we work pay. with Rosenbergs at work. I wonder if we work with Lou's. Okay. Oh, it's just so phenomenal. I had um, a ro I would have a roast beef, I think, and Rich had the Italian. It was literally the best sandwich. And they, they serve our baguettes. So it was the best sandwich I, I think I've had I don't think in I've 20 had the years. Oh, they're I need so to broaden good. my. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's not inexpensive. I think it was like $18 for the sandwich. And granted, it was gluten free. 18 19 something like that. Now, I've been to a local chain sub sandwich chain that will remain unnamed and i went oh did you just do that <laughs> anyways i was kind of disappointed because i went in and they don't serve our baguette that's fine they serve someone else's um and i just wanted a sandwich and they had two choices on the gluten-free menu for roast beef because i love roast beef there's just roast beef and then there's premium roast beef so i got the premium sandwich Ooh. paid 14 dollars for this sandwich wow. And it, it took me back to the 80s where I'm opening up going, where's the beef? Yeah. I mean, was, <laughs> it had so little meat and it was, it was so unsatisfying. And then we go to Lou's, which I was thrilled that they have our baguette, and spend $18 on a sandwich. So that's, that is the best sandwich wow. I think I've ever had. You can tell how quality the ingredients are and fresh and that they it, there's that level of care that went into that sandwich that was just amazing. So... Sometimes I feel like the the consumer gets taxed because they're gluten free. Well, it is you more expensive. I, so you know what happens a lot in restaurants is they may have this okay across the board. I got a thirty margin or whatever mm -hmm. on all my ingredients, and then they get they add a gluten free bread bun pizza whatever, and you're not going to be able to mark that up the same, and so that yeah. that throws things into disarray. And there's some restaurants that try to do that to keep all their margins you know exactly yeah. the same, but most restaurants will either you know add they'll, they'll, they'll add maybe a dollar over what they're paying for it a couple bucks right um and um, some won't even have enough charge which we don't support because you've, you're paying more that's gonna that's gonna screw at your margins and then there are some that that add such a huge upcharge that it's it makes it unreasonable but yeah, the majority like, do not yeah do that. You, you run into somewhere it's like what it's like a deterrent almost it, it is but i think they're trying to compensate <clears throat> a lot of them will have separate prep areas for, for whatever they're making gluten-free, so they've got to compensate for that and the extra training and, and things like that. I will say that I feel that 95 or 99 almost percent of restaurants in Denver that are that are serving gluten-free products and doing an upcharge are doing it fairly. Yeah. So that's good news. And back, in the, back when it all started, that wasn't necessarily the case either. But what they're realizing is um, when you're gluten-free and you're with a group of people, it's the gluten-free person who makes a decision. So if you make it really hard to get gluten-free at your restaurant, you're losing out not just on the gluten-free diner, but all their friends, Yeah, that too. party of eight may go yeah. next door. Exactly. Because so, the party of one within them has right. restriction. So uh, conversely, if you have one of the most amazing gluten-free menus and the gluten-free community knows that, you're going to get even more business because they're going to, they're going to, we're loyal. It's like we, right. it, and it's, it's loyalty out of desperation <laughs> to some degree <laughs> because it's like, okay, I can go here and I'm going to love it and I'm not going to get sick. And so I'm going to keep going there because that, that's peace of mind you don't get when you're like, oh, where should we go? Let's try this. Mm. You know, trying a new restaurant when you're gluten free is a, is a scary thing. Yeah. Because one, you could get sick or two, you could have a horrible experience. And, um, we had a guest on a few weeks ago, Tara, who um, we sat here and we talked about 
how we how you feel like a two-year-old when you go to a gluten-free restaurant and you're looking at the menu and you have your heart set on something and then the server comes and says i'm sorry we can't make that gluten-free or they take so much off and you just like damn it <laughs> i'm just not even gonna eat here i'm gonna get up and walk you know it's like you feel like this two-year-old who couldn't have their i mean it's it, but it, it's real it's frustrating a temper tantrum yeah moment. we throw a little temper tantrum yeah. and I, I i will admit I, i've done that because you you have so much built up to it. It's like, oh my God, I'm really gonna enjoy this, you know, because five times before I didn't, and then you get disappointed. Then they throw you out of the restaurant because you threw a temper tantrum. What do you, what do you, <laughs> what do you think the gluten-free world looks like on, in a restaurant scene in ten years? Like, what's, you think it's gonna be like 50-50 split? I, I think I think I mean, you're going to see more of the gluten-free seep into the non, the areas that you wouldn't use gluten-free. Like um, there's been quite a few restaurants have gone with the gluten-free yeah. breadcrumbs so that their meatballs are all gluten-free. I think you're okay. going to start seeing more of that. Um, you're, the and you will start seeing more of that when the consumer understands that there's a cost to that. That you know gluten-free breadcrumbs versus conventional breadcrumbs. I mean four times as much. Ex more expensive and right. things like that but as the consumer base is more educated and demanding more healthier options i think you're going to see restaurants do that too which is good because i would love to go have meatballs somewhere. well when you talk about breadcrumbs <laughs> it gets me thinking about thanksgiving which is oh, near. stuffing yes so my my mama um in louisiana makes a french bread stuffing that is just a dressing it's just mm -hmm. like phenomenal it's so called what? dressing in the south and stuffing everywhere mm -hmm. else. Yeah. What I mean, did you call your grandma? Mama. Mama and Papa. Mama makes dressing. Mama lives in Louisiana. Uh, she lives in the Do you swamps. need stuffing cube? We do We do have stuffing <clears throat> cubes for Thanksgiving. I don't know if you know that. Do you make them? Yeah. You, we you? sell them at retail. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, we, it's, it's a combination of our sandwich bread and our French baguette recipe. We're trying to get a Friendsgiving going, so if y'all are in town, let us know. Okay. But, yeah, um, I've got some local organic turkeys that we're gonna ooh, bring in from. Uh, I think I have my cousins farms. coming in. The last I heard for Thanksgiving, but um, so they're pre-herbed. Okay. And I have our. If you if you obviously have your your mama mama they mama said, mama oh, yeah mama. that that you have her recipe. <laughs> but if you need your own recipe, need another recipe, I have this really good recipe that involves sausage in in the stuffing. Interesting. It's really good. It's from I've, family I was, recipe. I was not a dressing fan. Mama's and same with my wife. She was like, "Whoa, what did she put in that?" <laughs> it's probably meat in there. Lots of French bread. And, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we've got the cubes. We've got tons of recipes. So we, we will hook you up. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, Brandon, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. I loved your it was pizza. Delicious. It was great. So I loved your pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go on the website. Your name's gonna be on it forever. And um, thank you again. This yeah. has been fun. Thank you. Cheers. Che oh, I like that. Cheers. Here's to Richard. Here's to Rich. And all the beer he drank. <laughs> Thanks for checking out this episode of Victoria's Gluten-Free GastroGab. Be sure to visit our website at victoriasglutenfreekitchen.com for recipes from today's show and to check out previous episodes. You can also find links to our partner pages or find a retailer or restaurant near you that serves Victoria's Gluten-Free Kitchen products. Thanks for your continued support.